At the suggestion of Katya, Alfred's Sicilian daughter, we visited the King of Gelato, Santo Musameci, and his daughter Giovanna. Pistachio and mandarin. Ooh. Later, we went to the Gambino Vineyard in Lingua Glossa. Katya took us to these points of light because they exemplify Sicilians' deep-rooted passion for the earth, the products it produces, and life. On the way there, as in all car rides, we had a little bit of fun. When Katya visited the United States, she developed a love for hamburgers, and we love to hear her say it. Did you know that they have fish hamburgers? Yes. Yeah, do you like fish hamburgers? Yes, I like it. You like the fish hamburgers? I will go. You'll go over there, right? They have the fish hamburgers. What's that? The fish hamburgers. Beef boot, hamburger. How do you spell that? Hamburger. Hamburger. When is the last time you've had a hamburger? An American. <laughs> we started in Randazzo at the award-winning family-run gelato and pastry shop, where Santo has been coming up with unusual gelato flavor combinations for almost five decades. Mandarin and pistachio. That's true. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this flavor won uh, two international uh, prizes uh, and two international yes. prizes. Almond, lemon, dark chocolate. Here you've got. You're gonna like this one. Almond and pear, man. How's that one, huh? And then this yeah, one here. This one over here is hazelnut, fig, and and orange. I have never seen in all my years in Sicily. These, ty these types of flavors. What's your you favorite? Uh, I think uh, Afro chocolate, baguette, uh, uh, chocolate. What's your In favorite? Right. Uh, he, 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 he says, uh, he say always that uh, uh, the ice cream are like a uh, um, figli, come traduco figli, uh, child. child. So there's, it's impossible to have one. Uh, all the gelatos are your kids. Yes. So and you love so, all of them. You love all of them. Yes. Santo has always loved sweets. In fact, his daughter Giovanna tells us that as a child during World War II, when his mother sent him out to buy pasta, he always snuck in some chocolates. There is a story that, uh, that uh, my grandmother tell, uh, tell us uh, during during the war, during the Second War, Second war, World yeah. war, war and uh, my grandmother uh, sent you uh, to buy the pasta and the meat. It's very, very difficult in uh, 1945 to, to have pasta. Every time he go to buy pasta, the, the he bought chocolate too. Yes, uh, he bought chocolate too. Uh, in, in the moment where he's, the people are very, very poor, he buys chocolate, so. <laughs> Opening a gelato store was a natural for him. We make uh, uh, regular flavors, traditional flavors like nose, uh, strawberry, and uh, and we have uh, seven, eight uh, our special receipts that uh, born um, with a combination of uh, fruit, fresh fruit, and um, fruit of our country from Sicily. We use only uh, from products from Sicily, so almond from Sicily, pistachio di Bronte, uh, strawberry of Maletto, and uh, zero kilometer. Uh, zero, zero kilometer. kilometer. <laughs> yes. Zero kilometer foods is a term we keep hearing in Sicily. It refers to locally grown bounty that is used everywhere from stores, restaurants, and in home. But here we have about 15 uh, olive trees and we are able to produce uh, olive oil for ourselves. Uh, we grow some eggplants and tomatoes and zucchini mm. that we use for ourselves. We pick up our fruit and we eat our fruit. As much as possible, we try to uh, nourish ourselves with our products. This is a bruschetta made with Sicilian tomato, some basil and olive, virgin olive oil, mozzarella with the, our milk, our sun-dried tomato. This is a frittata, we made it with um, all vegetable like um, aubergine, croquette or um, zucchini, all vegetable from our hot. We have a garden where we plant all these kind of things. So everything is locally grown? Yes, almost kilometer zero. We like to work with kilometer zero. We care a lot. At the core of it all is Mount Etna, the majestic volcanic mountain. People in this region refer to her as a mother, 
Her ashes are like nourishment, yielding bountiful harvests and outstanding flavor. Mm. Perfecto. Perfecto. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mandarin and pistachio. Yes, perfect. Now to another point of light and the Gambino Vineyard in Lingua Glosa. You may know the name Gambino as one of New York City's most notorious criminal syndicates. This is not that family. Francesco Razzidi's father bought a small parcel of land in the 1960s to build a villa and maybe grow some grapes. Your dad bought this as a villa. He had no idea he wanted to make wine. No, many things in the life are not really well planned. Sometimes, sometimes something happens uh, even uh, just for a case. They start to, um, they have a little vineyards around the, around the house and they fall in love for the, for the grape growing. And uh, little by little they started to buy the neighbor lands mm -hmm. and to build all the terracing uh, that you see while you come up uh, in the cellar. Uh, in the beginning, to be honest, there was not really the idea of the quality and nothing. It was just love to, to see the beautiful vines. They are, I think, uh, one of the most beautiful things in the world. The sea, uh, vineyards will keep it. But soon they discovered the climate, along with the volcanic ground rich with minerals, can produce abundant and aromatic grapes that are unique to the region. The wine from the volcano is something uh, different. You can tell, even in a blinding tasting, together 200 different types of wine. If you enjoy the wine from the volcano, it's not easy. You know, the, volcano, the, the grapes grown here are not easy to be managed. But if you know how to treat them, if you know how to grow them, you can get a, a, a really big variety of different quality wines, like white, rosé, red, or spumanti. There is a big possibility. They give us a lot. There's a certain science to making wine that starts with growing the right amount and type of grapes. We started during the winter pruning to prepare the vines to, uh, to produce less bunches of grapes, uh, leaving less blooms. And in the summertime, if we still see that we have an overproduction of grapes in August, we, we cut the access of grapes and we leave them on the ground. You mm -hmm. cannot imagine the face of our guests when they see the grapes left on the soil, they say it's a shame. But this is the only way to achieve the right pH, acidity and the sugar content in the grapes. It's to leave them on the ground. It's like to have less, less grapes means a uh, uh, higher uh, quality. Less grape means uh, that you, have, you achieve in a natural way your, the sugar content, the acidity, everything must have been balanced. This is the job of the agronomist. Mm -hmm. After, the, the job became uh, the one of the enologist. The enologist, after, have to get out from the grapes the best, uh, choosing the right temperature of fermentation, the right wooden barrels. There are a lot of different... It's chemistry. Yeah. Uh, it's an uh, experience and chemistry. Sometimes uh, you can go to use uh, the lab and uh, check uh, the, the, the grapes, but this is not enough. You need experience because sometimes you have to taste the skin to see if it is crunchy and to see the color of the seed. Uh, many variables. Uh, I don't, it's not easy to make a uh, good wine. Uh, after 32 years I feel a beginner. Uh, I, every, every vintage you can learn something, uh, something uh, new. But this is exciting, you know, because we feel always, uh, there is always a possibility, uh, the, the possibility to make uh, the wine better. Francesco, this is more than work for you. This is your life. This is our life. Uh, me, my brother, my sister, uh, my father, my mother, we live, uh, uh, we stay all the day long here. And uh, uh, I told you before, they, they let you fall in love. The grapes is uh, really, they are really charming. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start to make your first wine, uh, you cannot uh, think to do something else. What's your favorite part of all of this? Uh, the, the, those are my baby. I think that the vineyard is what to give to me. In the beginning, to let me suffer, because we are at the vertical limit of the viticulture. In the, in the northeast side of the volcano, Gambino is the highest vineyard. So here you cannot do mistake. Here everything you do must be done in the right way. 
so in the beginning it was really tough, but after when we uh, got the right balance in the grapes, we started to manage the, the vines, we get amazing rosé, beautiful white, interesting mm. red wine that you can enjoy after uh, 10 years with an interesting acidity and, the tanni and strong tannins. So the vines for sure are what uh, I really like. Winemaking in Sicily has evolved over the past few years. In the old days, Francesco says, winemaking was passed down generation to generation. Every family thought they had the best wine, but really, they all tasted like vinegar. Now, Francesco says, in the past 20 years, tradition combined with research has enhanced the quality of the wines. The quality go high, high, and little by little, the, the the Sicilian wine became more famous, and now is the time of the extra wine. Now everybody talk about the extra wine. The average of the company is a high quality. Sicily uh, as well. There is a. I'm really proud to grow grapes here. Ching ching. ching. We sat with Francesco and his brother Philadelpho, sipped wine, nibbled on local cheeses, and wanted to find out more about the brothers. The Etna Volcano is an island inside the island. When you That's enjoy a beautiful it, way to put yeah. it, huh? It's That's a beautiful, beautiful way to put it. Yeah. It's difficult to, to get a wine like that from the Nerello Mascales, but in the end, when you do it, you are proud. That's good. That's the brothers good. say they are also proud of the vineyard's name, Gambino. While the name has provoked some negative mafia stereotypes, the brothers say they stand by their heritage. What's your reaction when Americans come here and, and all they talk about is the godfather and, and your last name, but Gambino? Now, now I am really make fun of this. It's like I don't care. It's funny for you. They talk about family respect as if it was like a, a big value of the movie. But if you grew up in Sicily, and uh, you think that uh, uh, there was a lot of bad people that are doing so, that do something wrong. Uh, there is no really value, family value or respect value in uh, in uh, killing someone else. Someone told you that you should change the name of the company because it's Gambino. It was uh, one time in uh, in uh, New York. Uh, they told us, oh, "You have a really good wine. They are going to do a good." Uh, but it's better that you change the name because you can be. Uh, in some way, it, was, it is not so good to, to promote your wine here. And what was your reaction? I told to them that uh, we, are, we don't want to change the name because it's our mother last name. We still work, the company is going really well and we are keeping our uh, family name with us. The brothers say they just want to create an atmosphere where guests share their passion for wine, grapes, and laughter. This is, I think, is a magic too. So to share your experience, uh, to talk with them, uh, is, uh, I think, you met them, beautiful people, is uh, our love. Before leaving the vineyard, we couldn't resist and ask Katya about her favorite food. What's the food that you're talking about? <laughs> How do you say it? No. It never uh, gets old. With wine. With wine? No, fish. Fish and wine. Fish and wine? No. Hamburger. How you say it, Francesco? Hamburger. Hamburger. <laughs> Two more Sicilian points of light. Proud of their land and its harvest and passionate about their calling.